guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is Sunday, July the 1st, and I just want to welcome all of my new subscribers. And if you kind of don't understand what I'm talking about, it's because my channel is my autobiography, so you kind of have to go back for, to the beginning and watch some of the earlier videos. That way all the characters that I talk about in my life kind of fall into place and in chronological order. Um, well, now I'm all the way up to my second marriage, and my fourth, fourth year almost of being married to John L. Sullivan. So I have some more stories to tell y'all today, um, and welcome to all of my previous subscribers. I just love you, you guys so much, and love all the comments that you leave me, and, and you being so loving and faithful to me. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to continue with some more stories. Now, um, after John and I moved to Covington, and he started, um, you know, um, getting back in with some of his old high school buddies and drinking, then his alcoholism just started getting worse and worse. Now, these stories that I tell y'all, I do make fun of his drinking, and I laugh about it, but I just want you to know that I don't think it's, it was funny at that time. Um... The laughter that, that I do now is just my way of dealing with the pain of the memories from what uh, he caused, all of the pain and grief in our marriage. But um, I do laugh about it now, but it's not because I'm making light of um, alcoholics or alcoholism. So anyway, we had bought the house here in Covington, and um, by then they had started building these two-story duplex apartments. and. Um, the lots were only 50 feet wide. I mean, those there was an, a, a two-story building on each side of our little ranch house. So we went to the nursery and um, we ordered some Ligustrums. So we bought 80 Ligustrums. I remember we paid 60 cents a piece for them. Oh, and the man and woman who owned the nursery, they were so tickled to death to make that big sale. But uh, here's a, a picture of the little Ligustrums right here. We just planted them all along the property line there. That's Jason. We planted them all along the property line. Oh, and across the street, that's Jeannie and Fuzzy's house. Um, I guess we planted them probably about two feet apart. Of course, they were babies, and um, not long ago when I went home, we did go to Covington, and of course, the Lagustrums are huge now. They, they do make a big, beautiful, nice... Um, border fence now. But John was working at the scrapyard. It was called P&W Industries and he was making pretty good money there. Um, I, I didn't have to work. Um, I was doing the babysitting that I had told y'all about. And uh, John's drinking was just getting worse and worse. And um, so he worked with another salesman there at P&W and his name was Herman. And he was married to a woman named Gail, and uh, they had teen, two or three teenage children, and, you know, they had been married for a good while. So he and John went out drinking one night. Well, they, John pulled into the driveway. Um, they got there about 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, John, he came stumbling in, and um, so I, I looked out the window there, and the car, the engine was still running. So I went out there to turn the engine off, and Herman was passed out in the front seat. He was a little short guy, so I didn't even see him, you know, from the window in the house. He was all slumped down like this and everything, passed out. So I called Gail, and I said, Gail, um, Herman and John just came home. They're drunk, and Herman is passed out in the front seat. So she said, okay, I'll be there in a minute. So she came over there, y'all, and she opened up that car door, and she grabbed little Herman. She was a lot bigger woman than Herman was a man. She grabbed him and threw him over her shoulder. <laughs> there little Herman was hanging over her shoulder, and he was still passed out. His head was still dropped down and everything. And she said to me, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, little Herman, he never drank another drop of alcohol after that incident. <laughs> oh, Lord, that was...
was so funny. But anyway, we um we we were really having some problems in the marriage, so I started looking around for AA meetings. Well, I found one at the Methodist Church, and um so while they were having the AA meetings, they were having an Al Anon meeting in another room there at the same time, and. Any of y'all who are familiar with AA knows that uh, the Al-Anon is for the families of the uh, the alcoholics so that they can go and, and share their stories and get support. So I, I told John, I said, you've got to do something. You know, I can't keep living like this. you uh coming home drunk every night or not coming home at all. And uh, it was just causing me so much stress that I was starting to uh, clench my teeth and starting to have pain in my jaw. So anyway, we got a babysitter and John and I went to the Methodist Church that night to the AA meeting and the Al-Anon meeting. So I come walking out of the Al-Anon, the Al-Anon meeting group and all the, the people from the AA meeting came walking out and John wasn't there. He had left y'all and walked his ass to the bar. Well, I knew which bar he hung out at, so I just drove over there and went in there and drug his ass out and brought him home. But it, it was just getting unbearable. And uh, so I decided to make an appointment to see an attorney. So, um, you know, I just picked a guy out of the phone book. I, I didn't try to get any recommendations or anything. So I went into the office and it was about one o'clock. So the attorney was at lunch and his secretary told me, you know, he's, he's at lunch, he should be back any minute now. So he came in and uh, the secretary took me to his office and I went in there and sat down right across from him from his desk. And y'all, he was drunk. <laughs> he just reeked of alcohol. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. So. You know, I didn't want to just get up and walk out. I didn't know what to do. So I went ahead and told him my dilemma. And, um, you know, he asked me if I was working. And I told him no, that I was just doing a little babysitting. But that, you know, my husband is drinking. It's all I could do to keep from laughing because the attorney was drunk. <laughs> so he goes, well, you'd be jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> So that was it. I just left and I gave up on that idea of trying to file for divorce. So this is just another little chapter of my life and uh, I hope you liked it and just give me a thumbs up and y'all just keep on coming back. Bye.